Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Channeling my inner peace moment here. The only good part about today is chewing on this dang thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a rough one today, just not only on uh, the uh, podcast front, on a personal front, too. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm wishing you and your wife, or your wife in particular, <laughs> you've been feeling a little better. Yeah, I'm almost there. And uh, your wife, I hope she feels better soon. Yeah, thank you. So the Admirals took on the Grand Rapids Griffins. This show is going unsponsored because I want nothing to say that I say spun back at my sponsor. So thank you to our sponsor for being there for us. But today, um, we're not even going to give you the game recap of the score. Um, just on the basis that it was a touchdown versus a safety. Grand right. Rapids was one for seven on the power play. Right, seven power so is that shouldn't be happening. This is unacceptable. Not that I'm saying that it shouldn't happen. You get these every once in a while, no matter how good you are. Right. What I'm saying is, is this should not be happening consistently. Right. It's happening pretty consistent. I mean, Mitch McClade had a fight with Rudolph. Um, delay a game, roughing, roughing, tripping, unsportsmanlike conduct from Cole Smith, Jerry Davies for tripping. I mean, we're literally getting our butts kicked all game this game. Yeah, we were. Much credit to this. Some of the guys who showed up, like Healy, uh, Graham Knott, Cole Smith, Olivier did get a goal, but I didn't see much of him other than that goal. Right. He's not playing as physical as he could be. No, he isn't. Um, lots of turnovers. Um, yeah. And that for the Grand Rapids Griffins was Calvin Pickard stopping 25 of 27. Um, Starting the game was Connor Ingram, who stopped 14 of 18. And then in net was Devin Cooley, stopping 14 of 17. So as much as I don't want to sit here and rag on the whole team. Right. Because there were some guys who were making at least an effort. Yeah, and you could tell that. Some guys, it looked like they were making an effort. Other guys, it looked like they didn't want to be there almost. And that is, here's the thing. If you don't want to be at the AHL, you don't deserve to be at the NHL. Right. Because there's no way they're not going to, they're going to call you up. There's no way. It's just not going to happen. Unless you're, uh, um, you know, Matt Tennyson. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which, he's just on the taxi squad. I'm more worried about now, not at this point, finishing dead last, but having the worst season in Admiral's history. Right. As an AHL squad. Yeah. Their worst year was their first year finishing 30, 35, and 10. 30, 35, 10, and, Z and 5. Because an OT loss still counts as an OT. Right. They had ties back then. What is that? Yeah, they had ties back then. So that's just unacceptable at this point. What yeah, I would yeah. give to be a 
fly on a wall for that one. Yeah. In the locker room during each intermission. Right. What I'd give to be a fly on the wall in on the bus. Right, on the bus. <laughs> um, I mean, even the Admirals haven't got out of the first round of the playoffs since 2011. Right. 2019-2020 was our best chance that got ruined by COVID, obviously. We've talked about that enough, so let's not talk about it anymore. Right. That is now a very distant memory. I can't put all the blame on Carl Taylor. I can put some blame on Scott Ford for the defensive lack, but that's yet either here or there, because even if he is coaching and they're not listening, then I got to put it back on the team. Right. As a, Overall, as players. Um, you know, and, and, and that's just where we're at with this. It's like this year is just one of them years where we're going to literally be that was hot. <laughs> um, going to be if we're going to finish in the bottom, I want to take a look right now how many guys on our roster who would be back next year because I mean the season's not over we could still squeak into the fifth spot in the playoffs right that's not on um, um, how do I put it uh, not something that could happen it could Right, it could. What I'm saying is the change has to start now. Right. And you know, when we when we sit here and and really look at it, uh, there's been a lot of transactions today. I just want to make sure that I go through this. And don't miss the if the Everblades make war. Right. Ben Myers, goaltender, signed by the Florida Everblades. There you go, folks. Okay. Ben Myers, in his career, Bank Benjamin Myers from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Ah. Uh. Local boy. Um, has been like a third goalie for the Everblades for quite some time now. Right. Um, hasn't played much in the last couple years. Uh, played a little bit in the SPHL, but probably got a call from the Everblades going, hey, I um, kind of need somebody. Right. Um, was an e bug goalie emergency backup. Benjamin Myers from that is really cool. I, I, I like that. That's a cool moment. Well, that I love is. the local guys get a chance. Also, want to add in, um, I'm looking because um, we're starting to see guys on the move. Right. Whether it be from college, um, like the Canadian College League or elsewhere, um, you're starting to see those guys on the move. You're seeing a lot of goalies getting signed right now to the East. Yeah. Coast. From out of nowhere, out of thin air, just going boop. Right. So um, it, it's just one of those things. Um, 
No Windsor Spitfires and North, Batal North Bay Battalion made a trade in the OHL, which they're currently under suspension. Uh, so right. that uh, leaves that to be um, un un unknown to what effect that will have on the remainder of the year for for hockey. So, you know, um, the effect all this has is it's a delay on development. That's my right. Point. Um, I am going to see here and take a look at all of our team's schedule, our uh, rosters, and uh, kind of do a little check and see who could be gone next year, who could be back. It's kind of one of those situations. If already for the Admirals, uh, the Admirals right. have 25 players on their current roster. Um, while we're at it, I kind of wanted to dive a little in because we haven't done it in the system and our Admirals game was, well, so bad that I don't even want to talk about it. It, it. it just hurts the the all overall morale of our uh, group here. Yeah. This one stung a lot. It was like getting knocked out in the first round. It's just not fun. Um, right. They won the game in the first period. They literally. Yeah, they did. They, they just put the nail in the coffin in the second and third. Just they had overall, Grand Rapids had 21 points in this game statistically. They move the puck a lot better than we do. Yeah, they do. And that may come from coaching, maybe from something else. Don't know, but it's all about development at this point. But we've really got to, um, you know, pay attention here. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is that, um, you know, uh, the uh, a lot of teams right now are on pause and and, and stuff like that, and we'll see where we're at and what's going on but from the looks of it Freddie Allard is on pace to have his worst season he has two points in 17 games um you know uh Matthew Olivier four points in 18 games Anthony Richard four points in 19 games Mark Delgado five points in uh 24 games uh Grant Mishmash six points in 24 four games. Michael McCarron, six points in 14 games. Cole Sherwood with the Admirals, three points in 10 games. Which, if he gets three point a point in his next three, he'll match what he's done with Bellevue this year. All right. Um, you have Matt Tennyson, 10 points in 26 games. David Ferentz, 11 points in 25 games. Jeremy Davies, 12 points in 27 games. Igor Afanasia, 14 points in, tw in 29 games, who ended his five-game point streak. Cole Smith has 14 points in 24 games. Matt Love has 16 points in 20 games. Rocco Grimaldi has six, almost a point per game in 16 points in 17 games. Uh, Cody Glass has 21 points in 23 games. So, I mean, you know, we'll see where we're at. But, yeah. man, this ain't looking very fun. Um, As it sits, Tomas Vamaka is sitting in the E. Or sitting on the taxi squad. Um, I just wanted to bring up an, a, an interesting theory here. Um, Connor Ingram signed to next year, but Cooley is not. Every defenseman's contract is up it, that is on the Admirals roster at the current moment is up except for Mark Delgado. Okay. Um, every contract in as far as forwards except for Igor Afanasiev. Um, Grant Mishmash, Matthew Olivier are up. So Solo, Smith, Sherwood, Schneider, 
Uh, Richard, McLean, Lebate, not Grimaldi, Glass, but Glass is an RFA, Carpenter, Apeps alone. Yeah, uh, McLaughlin, Healy, uh, Ferentz, Donovan, uh, Davies, Blugis, and Allard are all up, and Cooley's up. Uh, for the Florida Everblades, um, right now, every single player um, with Cam Barker out with an injury, Stefan LeBlanc out with an injury. They're really hurting in the defensive uh, department in, in, as far as that is concerned. Right. Um, they even have guys, uh, uh, they have another local guy, uh, Jeremy Diener, uh, 34 years old, 5'10 defenseman. Yeah. Um, and Ben Myers, emergency backup goalie for them. Uh, the, like I said, this is just a situation where it's not looking good for any of us uh, uh, system-wise, except for Nashville. And with that being said, one thing I wanted to get into Nashville's upcoming free agents. I'm not doing like a statistical breakdown. Uh, Riddich is up. Borrow's up. Borrow will resign. Benning's up. Benning might resign. Um, Harper's up. They're just going to let him go. Otherwise, everybody else defensively is signed. So you have three defensemen up and a goalie. Uh, Ingram is. Right. I think Ingram's ready to take the backup role anyway. So by the end of this year, he should be. Um, Nick Cousins, uh, Luke Kunin, uh, Tommy Novak, and Yakov Trennan's contracts are up. Trennan will get paid. Um, Janelle is a year out from that. Um, Sissons is signed through 2025-26. I would not be surprised to see the Preds try to hold that herd line till 2025-26. Right. Find everybody to that that length and 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 go from there. Um, and then try and wrap that up because you want to keep trying to. And, and and Novak and and Kunin, but the big one you're worrying about right now is Phil Forsberg. Right. And and God only knows what he's asking. Um at the current moment for the foreseeable future. Um this year's free agency pool okay for the NHL upcoming um the top goaltender right now out there is Tuka Rask the top players are Brendan Peary Eric Stahl Bobby Ryan, and that's it. And stall is done, I think. So, I mean, the, the, the way things are going right now doesn't really seem good, but it's, we'll see where we're at. Um, around the NHL right now, uh, Pittsburgh did beat St. Louis 5-3, to three, so the Preds still hold on to their lead in our division. Uh, Toronto beat Edmonton. Um, Vancouver and the Islanders are postponed. All games from American teams going into Canada that are not fully vaccinated are, are being postponed. Which if they put that in place for the rest of the year, if you're not fully vaccinated, don't even think about playing in the NHL. Because that's the way it's starting to look, unfortunately. It's not a choice. But 
outside of that, things seem to be going a little bit better. And apparently me and John have the same thing in mind. He has an Alex Prunty uh, card on his wall and I have to be wearing his shirt. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, much love to Slinger Speedway and their racetrack. Um, they they do some of uh, our uh, group at TNT Racing that we uh, sponsor. Thank you to Marty and Brandon over there at TNT Racing, as well as myself being a crew member of theirs as well. Boy, what a headache that can be at times, but <laughs> gives me fun during the summer. Um, also, so summer scheduling note for you guys. I just wanted to put that out there now. So because me and John have talked about this quite frequently um, lately, um, our summer schedule will be that we are doing the first day of the draft live. Second day will be graphics. Um, after that free agency first day, um, we will take a look. The first few days, if the Preds make no moves, um, we're just going to pay attention to our, our team and some of the big names. And, and, yep. and from there, because right now, as it sits, that's all we can do. Uh, I have a new baby coming, so I got to make sure that my focus is on my family. And John wants me to focus on that as well. So, yeah, as well as it'll be racing season. So I got to focus on that as well, promoting them, promoting ourselves, um, you know, and we're still going to be coming around doing stuff. So it's just a matter of not if, but when. So right. summer, you'll probably see a little less of us than you did last year. Um, maybe not so much on the graphic side, not so much on the video side. It, it, it'll be more of an off-off season than normal for us, uh, just because we want to dial back a little bit. We'll maybe pop in once a month or so or every couple weeks, just letting you guys know what's going on with us and what we're hearing around the league. Then around August or so, you'll see start our rookie development camp rookie camp you'll start to see us and then definitely rookie camp you'll see us so right um we'll be getting back into the swing of things for ourselves as well as well as the draft camp when they do scrimmages and stuff like that we'll be paying attention to those as well right um but for that uh this is all that's all we've got today folks um, I really apologize for us not really wanting to talk about the Admirals game so much. Also, kudos to Yakov Trenin yesterday scoring in his 100th NHL game. By the way, yep. Filthy Mitts, Philip Forsberg, kudos on that sick goal there. Um, that's still being run all over the NHL, which is actually kind of funny. I'm um, seeing posts still about it. Um, right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we will be back on friday um the reason we are not i'm giving you guys a quick heads up my kid is in um virtual schooling right now due to covid so normally we would be doing recaps after a west coast swing but with my kid being in virtual schooling and me having to be up at seven o'clock in the morning to help him through that through all the technical mumbo jumbo with the computer which is where my specialties lie <laughs> um, you know uh, it makes it very difficult including having um, my wife has an ultrasound, ultrasound tomorrow um, you know Sarah um, is healthy uh, that's by the way I, I've been, I'm not sure if I've said her name on camera before but I don't I, think you I, have I, we're having a girl her name will be Sarah Marie Goodemo. Um, we're very happy that the baby is healthy my wife is healthy where everybody's doing good we're just really really tired a lot lately and with John just getting over a cold, I'm surprised he's even here. <laughs> I am too. I didn't know how I was going to be tonight, but I was feeling well Trust enough. Me, me and John almost had heart attacks. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I had to take my heart medication. I had to smoke, as you saw. <laughs> when I, if I get stressed, I either pop baby aspirin or smoke. And smoke is right. hot today because I'm out of baby aspirin. <sighs> this team, man, I don't know. I, I really hope for the best. And yeah, I do too. I mean, I there's only one get place. It together or at least string together some wins in a row to help their chances to get to the playoffs or, you know, not even finish last. Where they are now. Not finish last. Right. 
So, um, and, it, and it is kind of unfair because they go by win percentage. And not every point. team plays the same amount of games, so the win percentage is secured. Right. So that's my humble opinion on that. So I don't think that's going to work at all. It's just utterly frustrating at this point that not every team in the league has to play the same amount of games. Right. You know, like we're playing Colorado, but Colorado only plays a certain amount of games. So we're playing extra games against them because they don't have the teams in their division to play. And because uh, they don't want to travel. They are in February to the Panther Arena on the left. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, this weekend, lots of good stuff coming. You have Cowbell Night on Friday night, Saturday night. They're giving away pizza cutters. So lots of good giveaways. Saturday night is also salute to law enforcement. And Friday night is hog night. Not mom night like John thought. <laughs> but, you know. That was pretty funny. The with... text was small, man. <laughs> but then again, it, would, it could be possible that we do see mom night if they play like this. Ugh. Not that I want that for the admirals. I really want what's best for them and their organization. Their front office has always been so kind to us. Yes. Though we are a pain in their butt at times. <laughs> yeah. More in particularly. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I mean, really, today, overall, crap list. Omicron. Omicron, you're definitely on that list. Delta, you're there too. You COVID and your entire family, you can stay on that list. But today, the, all the whole team, except for the goalies and the coaching staff, those were the only guys that really showed up. Yeah. If they don't like what I said, do better. Play better. You know, play, like better. play better. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you the hard truth. I know it's all about development, and we are developing. Certain players are developing. Right. Certain players are showing the the shining a light on themselves through the darkness. But you cannot oversee darkness when you have a seven spot dropped on you. Right. So that's just one of those. Yes, they you could say they played a good game, but only specific players played a good game. Good game. Right. They have not put out a full team effort since home opener. Right. And I think that is bad. And not good for this team. Right. But we can only hope for better. And, yep. you know, like me and John said, um, offseason should be interesting in a very active one, given yeah. the contracts that are up. So, I mean, as much as we're going to say that we're not going to be busy, right? we could be more busy than usual. Yeah. I mean, I've remembered our first year, I was talking about 20 signings within the first month or so of a free agency. So right. hopefully, oh, by the way, Prince, please go sign Daniel Carr and bring him back, please. <laughs> Just a quick reference. We missed Daniel Carr over here. Freddie Gaudreau too, but, you know, he's doing well in the NHL. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you all later.